Hey, good day. I'm Chris Ruff, the professional prospector, and today we're going to talk about platinum. Woo! It's a valuable metal, and we're going to talk about a little bit more about the platinum group metals because, generally speaking, platinum occurs with a, a host of different similar metals platinum, palladium, osmium, iridium, ruthenium. I mean, there's, a, there's a whole group of them. We're going to talk about the whole group, but today we're going to talk about platinum. Platinum deposits, how to recognize a platinum deposit, where platinum occurs, where it might be found, what platinum nuggets look like. I get guys sometimes coming to me and saying, hey, uh, I think I found a platinum nugget. And, you know, it might be possible, but because they certainly are found, and, except uh, most of the time when people come up to me with that, it's usually a piece of aluminum that got melted. It's, it's certainly a metal and it's kind of the right color, but. Uh, Anyway, we're going to talk about platinum so you can identify the real thing and know what you're looking at. And so anyway, come along with me. First of all, uh, just come following up on that. I'm at an old placer mine in California. And it's an old hydraulic mine where the miners used high power uh, water to wash away the, the gold and gravels and collect the gold, of course, in, in their sluice boxes. So you say, well, why are you at an old gold mine, Chris? Because today we're talking about platinum. Well, I'm, I'm at an old gold mine because a lot of the old gold mines in Northern California, a number of them produce some platinum too. And we're gonna talk about the kinds of rock that platinum occurs in. And actually in, in this part of the country in Northern California, they have a rock called serpentine, which is descended from uh, rocks called uh, like peridotite and dunite. These are rocks that are a lot like granite, except instead of being mostly light colored, they're mostly dark colored and hardly any light colored minerals. And what happens is the peridotite or the dunite, they get altered near the surface from some heat and water and that sort of thing. And they change into this rock called serpentine that's green and kind of green gray and waxy looking. But these rocks come from deep within the earth and they bring up stuff that's way deep down in the earth and sometimes they bring up a little bit of platinum. So we're gonna talk about platinum deposits, how they occur, where they're mined, where platinum's been mined in the US, and where you might find a platinum nugget, and how you'd know if you found one. So stay tuned, we're gonna go right into it right now. All right, today we're gonna to be talking about platinum and the PGMs. Now you might ask, what's a PGM? No, that's the platinum group metals, and that includes, of course, platinum, but also palladium that's um, used in automotive catalytic converters, or rhodium, ruthenium, osmium, and iridium. Now, um, platinum is something that's kind of ignored by a lot of people. They don't realize that, hey, there's a fair amount of platinum out there that you should probably go after it. And we're going to teach you how to recognize platinum nuggets how to recognize platinum hard rock ores. And then finally, once you know how to find it or what it looks like, um, we're gonna talk about how where to go to find platinum in the USA, Canada, and the rest of the world. So let's start off with how to recognize platinum nuggets. Here's a great picture of a platinum nugget. And what I can tell you about this is that platinum is a lot harder than gold. Gold is a pretty soft metal, so gold nuggets tend to get banged around pretty good. And platinum, you know, it's not uh, like a diamond or something, but it's a lot harder than gold and tends to get beat up less. So one of the things about recognizing platinum, first off, is that you'll notice it's kind of a steel gray color. It's not as white as silver or aluminum, but it is a kind of a steel gray, but importantly, there's no rust. Here's another platinum nugget, which you can see, again, is steel gray in color. No rust, no sign of, of iron rust. Uh, another thing that you'd note if you had this nugget in your hand was you could put a magnet to it, and platinum is not magnetic, so it won't stick. Of course, if it were steel, even if it weren't rusted, if it were like stainless steel, um, you'd still uh, be able to put a magnet to it and the magnet would definitely stick. So platinum is silver or it's a steel gray, non-magnetic, 
It's also really heavy. You'll see that, that pieces of, of platinum are actually as heavy as gold. Actually, platinum is, is, if you measure it very carefully, slightly heavier than gold. And gold is half again more dense than lead. So platinum is really heavy, dense stuff. I do get people sometimes come to me with things that look like nuggets and they're silvery or silvery gray and uh, they say well i think i might have found a, a nugget of platinum and platinum is pretty rare stuff it it, it doesn't is not as widespread as gold uh, it doesn't occur in many places and most of the time when people tell me they found platinum and they show me this platinum i put it in my hand and you can feel that it's super light and the trick is is that it's always when i get this case where it's super light it's always melted aluminum and i have to tell them oh this is an aluminum can that somebody tossed in a fire and it got melted and then it got rolled around in a stream or on a beach or something like that and now you have a light little nugget of aluminum that's not really worth a lot whereas platinum of course is pretty rare and valuable stuff now, platinum does come in crystals, and these are actually little crystals of platinum that grew and uh, were recovered in a, a placer mine. So they're little tiny nuggets, but they show the squared off crystal shape of crystallized platinum. Again, here's another one that's your steel gray, and uh, you would find it very heavy and fairly hard, harder than gold. Of course, if you really did find a platinum nugget, you don't want to beat on it with a uh, hammer to see how hard it is. Here's another. This is a large platinum nugget. This is a nine ounce platinum nugget from Russia, the USSR. And um, it, it, you'll see one of the things about this piece, and you'll see in, in, a, in the next one as well, you'll see some black things that are kind of embedded in the surface. It isn't just cracks and crevices and little holes, but there's some kind of black substance that's embedded in the surface of this nugget. And that black substance is a mineral called chromite. And one of the things that we're gonna learn is that when platinum forms in the ground, it's often closely associated with chromite. And chromite, like it sounds, is the chief ore of the metal chromium like you have a chrome plated bumper on your car and so it's it's often closely associated with chrome with chromite another pretty platinum nugget uh, that I took a picture of again with the black material in the surface of it that's chromite this is also from Russia but uh, like I say if you find a nugget and you're wondering if it's platinum, it doesn't have to have these little black things in it because that not all of them do, but it'll be heavy and uh, in fact, it'll be real heavy, much heavier than lead, and uh, it will be resistant to acids. That's another thing is if you put, uh, sometimes people find pieces of lead and the lead can be, you know, find lead with your metal detector or with a sluice box and it will be river rolled and nugget looking like this is kind of rounded but uh, uh, you can put an acid called nitric acid on a platinum nugget and if you put it on the platinum nugget nothing will happen to the platinum if you have actually a piece of lead and you're confused and think your lead might be platinum well if you put a lead chunk in nitric acid it will kind of bubble and then just dissolve so those are the big tests of, of, uh, of platinum is that it's heavy, that it's kind of a steel gray color, and that it won't dissolve in nitric acid, and, uh, and that it's rare. It's found in certain areas, which we're going to talk about. So now that you know a little bit more about what platinum nuggets look like, let's talk about some more about platinum hard rock deposits and what they look like and what a normal hard rock platinum deposit is and and the only 
big commercial platinum hard rock mine in the U.S. Hard rock platinum ores, because, well, nuggets originally formed in the ground somewhere, uh, be it some sort of uh, deposit, and we're going to talk about different kinds of platinum ores. We're going to talk about platinum minerals, and then we're going to get into the geology of platinum nuggets and how platinum forms in rocks. Because it's a lot different than if you've watched any of my other videos about gold and how gold ores form, um, you'll find that platinum is much, much different. So one of the first things about platinum ores is they tend to be dark colored. Now remember we saw those nuggets that had little bits of chromite in it? Well, uh, this, this isn't all chromite, but it's it, the platinum tends to occur in dark colored minerals and dark colored rocks. It's because it occurs in rocks that are rich in iron and some other minerals as well. But that tends to make the rocks very dark colored. And you'll see that as we go through here. Now this is a chunk of palladium platinum ore from Montana, uh, from the Stillwater Range. And there's actually an active uh, platinum palladium mine up there. They also recover some copper and nickel from the mine. And uh, they mine this material and process it up there. And it makes uh, the United States one of the big producers of platinum, palladium, platinum group metals. Now here is a piece of ore from Nevada, but this is a very unusual plat platinum ore. It's a replacement deposit in limestone in Clark County, the Good Springs District, which is uh, a little bit south of Las Vegas. It's actually in the same county as Vegas. And this replacement deposit there's a series of them and you can see the green that means it's got some uh, copper in it and these deposits have copper and a few of them have gold and some of them have silver um, and some of them have significant values in platinum uh, this ore actually contains uh, about a half an ounce per ton of platinum which is for platinum ore pretty darn good now I said that it contains some gold and sometimes silver. The uh, association of gold and platinum together is very, very unusual. Usually the ores that uh, are good for platinum, they have tiny, tiny traces of gold, you know, about part per million or two, um, but not significant amounts of gold. And this ore is, is unusual in that some of it has significant gold and significant platinum. I get people asking me about ores and they said they had got an assay that it was super rich in platinum and super rich in gold. And I can pretty much tell them every time that uh, your, your assay is bogus. Whoever did your assay did it wrong. So uh, very unusual ore to have, you know, maybe a half an ounce of platinum and a half an ounce of gold unusual stuff but it does occur but very very rare now you might ask about platinum minerals and I'm going to show you some examples of a platinum containing mineral you see the silvery colored crystals on this specimen that mineral is a mineral called sperylite and it's, it's spelled s-p-e-r-r-y-l-i-t-e and it's a combination of platinum and arsenic. So, uh, you know, an arsenic, of course, is a, a nasty poison. But uh, here in nature, uh, platinum uh, tends to combine with arsenic and make this unusual mineral sperylite. And there's not that many places that have significant amounts of this mineral, but there are a few. And if you find one, uh, well, it's, it's a rich ore that certainly contains a lot of platinum and platinum group metals. So if you find anything like this, uh, you've made a great strike. Here's another piece of ore with some sperylite in it. Now, we're going to start getting into the geology of platinum and how platinum deposits form. Now, this is a model for or basically a, a geological concept of how um, bodies of uh, nickel, 
the copper, cobalt, and platinum group metals uh, form. That basically you get um, some partial melting of the, the mantle and a body of magma comes up, but it has a chance to cool slowly and it has to be a body that's uh, very rich in iron minerals from deep within the, uh, the mantle of the earth. Because actually it turns out that platinum is actually pretty darn rare in the crust of the earth. It's much more common deeper down, you know, tens of miles uh, and, and 50 miles and more into the earth's surface. Once you get down into the, the mantle of the earth, well, then there's, there's a lot more platinum down there than there is on the crust. And there are various ways that types of magma from deep, deep within the earth will make it to the surface. And some of those have significant platinum in them. And that's basically the general concept of how platinum deposits form. Now there's different types of platinum deposits and they have related kinds of formations, but the one that gives rise to the nuggets of platinum, which most prospectors would be most interested in, um, those are what are called the Alaskan type. And they have what's called mafic to ultra, ultra mafic inclusions. These are um, rocks that are rich in dark colored minerals. And uh, they're well known as sources of platinum placers in the Ural Mountains of Russia, in the far east of Russia, southeastern Alaska, been a lot of nuggets of platinum found in California, and of course, Colombia, Australia, and some other regions. We're going to look at a map that shows some of all the different places where placer platinum has been found. Now, in talking about the geology of platinum nuggets, we basically are looking at what they call the Ural Alaska type that, that tends to form nuggets, and these nuggets form in the very last stages of solidification of ultramafic magmas. Now, you may say to yourself, what in the world is that? Well, um, these are bodies of molten rock that solidify well below the surface, and it's kind of like granite. If you were to look at this piece, you would see that it has some similarities, you know, the little crystals and stuff that you would see in a chunk of granite. But in most granites, there is a predominance of light colored minerals and a few little dark colored ones sprinkled through there. Whereas this rock is the other way around. It's a predominance of dark colored minerals, way predominance of dark colored, with a few light colored ones sprinkled around. And that's how geologists um, measure um, different kinds of magma is the amount of quartz and the amount of iron and magnesium. If it's rich in iron and magnesium, it would be like this. If it's rich in quartz and uh, light in certain elements, then it's going to be uh, a type of rock from the granite family. So platinum nuggets are associated with this kind of rock, this deep seated, it comes from deep in the earth, and you know the magma coming up from deep in the earth is much richer in iron and other related minerals, magnesium too. And so we get formations of rock like this. And the platinum, because like I say, it's very rare in the surface of the earth, It mostly the deposits have to come from deep within the earth. And it's associated often with deep-seated faults or subduction zones and plate tectonics. But there are cases where rock like this comes up to the surface and forms and outcrops on the surface. But like I say, this is a granite-like rock. It's called peridotite, and it's a magma that comes up from, like I say, deep, deep within the earth. Now, in California and Oregon and some other U.S. locations, the platinum-bearing ultramafic rocks, like that peridotite we just looked at, another rock closely related is called dunite, and these have been altered on the surface to a greenish gray colored rock called serpentine. This is a picture of serpentine. And serpentine is actually a, a fairly common rock in, in um, California. And in some cases, it actually has been mined in the past for asbestos. But any platinum that was still in the peridotite or dunite when it formed and solidified 
even though the rock has changed appearance quite a bit and is now this green gray color the platinum that was in them will still be in them and as this rock weathers and breaks down into little pieces whatever platinum that erodes out of this rock will find its way into streams and rivers and that sort of thing that would then be something that you could prospect to find platinum now where should you go to find platinum that's probably the thing that most of you have been wanting to find out now we're going to talk about the platinum districts of the united states including alaska but we're also going to talk about platinum in canada and the rest of the world so let's start out with the usa because uh, most of my audience are people from the us although we get a good good number from canada and australia and other places on the planet but we'll start out with the us take us first okay well here's a map that shows places around the world where significant amounts of placer platinum nuggets and flakes have been found by miners and you can see there's quite a few of them around the world now in the u.s you basically have the west coast washington oregon and california and then alaska and in canada you have uh, british columbia yukon northwest territories um, alberta saskatchewan so the, you know there's there's a pretty good sprinkling toward the west in canada as well but the biggest sources of placer platinum on the planet have been in colombia and in the ural mountains of russia that doesn't mean that there aren't some good other places uh, where you might find platinum in uh, in in a placer deposit but those are have been the biggest sources but like i say some significant amounts have been found on the west coast of the u.s there's a number of places in california and oregon and washington now this is a native platinum nugget from Trinity County in California. That's in the northwest part of California, way up almost to the Oregon border. And uh, you can see this nugget. Again, it has the, the steel gray color, but no, no um, rust of any type because, of course, platinum doesn't rust like iron. And then the other thing I want to say is that these nuggets can be found with metal detectors. That if you have a metal detector, and you want to go out and search for platinum well you know a lot of these places like this big flat in trinity county were sources of both gold and platinum and so if you were hunting there with your metal detector you would have a chance to find gold you'd also have a chance to find platinum now i will say that most of these places had a lot more gold than they had platinum but even so you know you won't be disappointed if you found a nice nugget of gold instead of platinum I'm sure you wouldn't find that to be a problem, but you know, if you were looking for gold and found platinum, again, not a problem. Now, a lot of the gold from California was mined with bucket line dredges, like this one. This is actually an early day photo of a, a bucket line dredge operating in California down below the Sierra Nevada, but it was also found in hydraulic mines as well. And here's a map showing you remember i showed you that peridotite and the serpentine serpentine type rock that was kind of a green green gray kind of color well this map shows the bodies of that serpentine green colored rock that once was peridotite or dunite or something like that and has been altered to to now be um, be serpentine it shows where that the bodies of that are in northern california and i will say that to the east along the foothills of the Sierra there's a kind of a belt there and those definitely have uh, platinum associated with them here and there um, in the west just above San Francisco there's a kind of a smaller belt that uh, has had some not a lot but some platinum associated with that and then in the far northwest corner you can see some large areas of serpentine rock and this is where the most extensive platinum has been found in the state of California. And this, this area of, of lots of serpentine extends north because the border north of California is into Oregon. And that same geologic province 
uh, both gold bearing and platinum bearing extends into um, the southwestern part of the state of Oregon. So both southwestern Oregon and northwestern California, they're only differentiated by a state line that goes through them. Um, both of these areas have yielded a lot of platinum nuggets. Now here's a platinum nugget from Alaska. And another platinum nugget from Alaska. You can see again um, the steel, steel gray kind of color and nugget shape. It would be very heavy. And it also, this is a, a bucket line dredge operating in Alaska. And, and the, most of the platinum in Alaska has been in the southwest portion of the state. In, in an area called Good News Bay. And there actually was a dredge that operated there from the 1920s until I think the 1970s or 80s that produced uh, many, many pounds of platinum. Um, it was principally a platinum mine. Uh, so there's a lot of, of platinum there in the Good News Bay area. There's actually even a little town by the name of Platinum. These are some platinum nuggets from the state of Washington. So, you know, if you're in uh, Washington, Seattle area, you know, there's there's uh, both nuggets like this that occur in some of the streams. And then also there are um, uh, fine, fine, tiny flakes of platinum in some of the beach sands that, that are found there as well. Now, the big producer of platinum in the United States is the Stillwater mine in south central Montana. This is a big giant hard rock mine that has uh, hundreds of employees and is very active and produces huge amounts of, uh, of platinum rich ore. And here's a, a picture of some of the ore. I showed you this picture a little earlier, but here's a close up. Now I'm pointing to some uh, kind of metallic colored minerals that are kind of uh, uh, yellow gray. That's not metallic platinum. Those are um, sulfide minerals, basically the co combination of copper and nickel and other minerals with sulfur, iron with sulfur. And it's the palladium is contained in rich areas, clots of these sulfides. And they mine it and will crush this rock and extract the sulfide minerals and then the uh, Palladium and platinum are extracted out of that. The black in this, some of the black in these in the photograph here, the really dark color, not the light gray, but the darker colored stuff, some of that black is chromite. Like I say, um, it's very common that platinum is associated with chromite. Here's another picture of the uh, rich uh, ore from the Stillwater mine up in Montana. Now there's a body of rock called the Duluth complex named because it's not too far from Duluth, Minnesota. And there's a series of platinum group mines, copper nickel mines, um, and other along the Western edge of this complex of, of rocks. And there's actually several mining operations that are looking at uh, getting started to work here, mostly for the copper nickel values. But because uh, the, the platinum group values in this ore is not super high, but it, it's enough, well enough, that you certainly would want to um, extract it if you mine the ore. So uh, look for the future to uh, open up you know, some of the mines in this Duluth area of the Great Lakes states. Now, this map shows the world's biggest platinum mining countries. And you have uh, Canada and the U.S., of course. But then South Africa and also Russia and uh, anyway, so there's a, a number of countries that have been, these are the basically the five biggest platinum producers currently in the world. Now this, this map shows uh, hard rock platinum mining districts that and now not all of them are being actively mined currently, but uh, they show where it, where the distribution of these 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 deposits are across the planet, and you can see the Stillwater complex in in uh, Montana and the Duluth complex in the Great Lakes area. There's a couple of 
other uh, um, bodies of uh, platinum bearing uh, materials in the, the Great Lakes area that uh, are actually across the border into Canada. And then, uh, of course, in uh, Western Australia, there's some, uh, some reef type uh, platinum deposits. But I think most prospectors are really basically chiefly interested in platinum placer deposits. And so you might take a picture of this map because it is very accurate and shows some of the places where uh, you might find platinum placer nuggets if you're out prospecting in your efforts in the, your part of the world. And if you're in this part, uh, part that where there's uh, plat placer platinum, well, maybe you want to do some more research and find out what your opportunities might be. Well, what next? Of course, go out there and get your platinum. It's out there waiting for you. All right, I hope you've enjoyed our talk today about platinum, about identifying platinum nuggets, about recognizing platinum ores, and knowing what platinum is like and what kind of environments it occurs in and, and the geology of platinum. So now that you know more about that, I hope that you want to become a better prospector so that you can go out and find gold, and platinum, maybe diamonds or sapphires. You, could, you learn about that kind of stuff, the skill that you gain is based on your knowledge. And in order to give people a better chance and to know more and be a better, better and more successful prospector, I wrote a book called Fistful of Gold, and it's about getting fistful of gold. And so uh, I hope you'll uh, be interested in it. It's an encyclopedia, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my book right now. Okay, so I wanted to tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, I wanted to be able to share the knowledge that I've gained about finding gold and, and how to be successful. And so I spent years literally writing this book, Fistful of Gold. It's more than 350 pages long, which is why I say it's an encyclopedia of everything you need to know about finding your own gold. Um, I've sold more than 8,000 copies and I've got a lot of really great feedback on it. It just is the most complete book on the market. It has information about finding gold that literally is not available in any other book that you're going to find for prospectors because I took technical stuff from geologists and other um, mineral scientists and I've translated that into language that the average guy can understand. You don't need a PhD to go out and find gold. But the information that scientists have learned over recent decades can can be of a lot of help to people. So it's in this book. Uh, if you're interested about finding gold, panning, sluicing, nugget detecting, uh, dry washing, the geology of gold deposits and how they form, it's all in here. And like I say, it's more than 350 pages long. So if you'll just go to the description underneath this video, um, you can take a look. I've got a link in there to take it to Amazon to the site where the book is sold. And I think you'll you'll really enjoy it. Take, take a look at all the people who've commented on this and have really liked the book. It has a, a very, very high rating for a book. And also, I have a, a website, my own free website that uh, you can take a look at. Um, I've got all kinds of information on here about uh, doing research and how to find gold, a lot of good information, stuff that basically uh, couldn't fit into my book. And so I put it on this website and I have a, a link also for that in the video description. So take a look in the description and you can click on the, uh, the link and it'll take you to my website. And finally, if you like this presentation, I've got a lot more coming out. Here's a three and a half ounces of gold that I found a couple years back in one area. Um, I've got a lot more of these videos coming on gold, gemstones, hard rock, placer, a lot of metal detecting. There'll be lots of metal detecting stuff. So if you really enjoyed this, click the subscribe button and then tick the notification bell off and YouTube will let you know when I publish new stuff. And hit the like button as well. And please comment on these videos because I'm interested in what you have to say. And I promise to answer any questions you have. So if you are wondering about anything or think maybe I didn't cover something thoroughly enough in a video, then let me know and I'll be happy to try and help you out and give you whatever information you need. So... 
Thanks a lot, and I um, hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you again real soon.